we welcome Dr. Sanjeev Kanoria. So thank you, Swamiji, for a very enlightening speech, uh, for clarifying the purpose of life. Um, it was very interesting to see how great saints and great souls have always focused on humility and service to mankind. I sometimes approach life with a contrarian view. Many people have asked me, many youngsters I meet regularly, they ask me, what is the purpose of life? In today's age of technology and today's age of instant gratification, it is normal for people to ask, what is the purpose of life? Our great saints and monks have always told us that the purpose of life is to find God. The purpose, is, purpose of life is to realize the self. <clears throat> In the Gita, we have been told by Lord Krishna that the purpose of life is to fulfill your karma, your duty, without expecting any rewards and to keep the mind focused on him. With so many different views and thoughts, sometimes it is normal for people to get confused and for youngsters to get confused. So I would just like to, what I think is the purpose of life and what I have discovered in my own journey. So growing up as a youngster, I thought the purpose of my life was to be the best doctor in the world. And that was my focus, to become the best doctor in the world. When I got all my qualifications and achieved all my training, I suddenly realized this was not the purpose of my life. So what is the true purpose of my life? Fortunately, I found my master early on in life, but finding your master does not mean that your trials and tribulations end. Finding your master does not mean that the roller coaster of the roller coaster ride of life ends. The roller coaster ride of life actually begins once you have found your master. He takes you on a roller coaster ride. He exposes your weaknesses to you. He exposes everything to you which you need to know and understand to be able to evolve and to be able to play a game very well. So coming back to it, is, was, it was important to express this particular point because I suddenly realized that medicine was not the purpose of my life. Service was not the purpose of my life. Humility was not the purpose of my life. So what is the purpose of my life? And over the years, as I meditated and asked for soul guidance, I realized that the purpose of life was to play the role which you have been given by the cosmic master very well. And that, according to me, is the purpose of life. And how do we play that role very well? How do we know that this is our role in life and not something else? Again, it is through deep intuition, through guidance, through prayers and meditation, we start to understand what is our role in life. We can have multiple roles in life. At different times in our life, we can have a different role. And I started to realize that the purpose of my life was probably to have played each of those roles very well. And if I failed in playing any of those roles very well, I was failing in the purpose of my life. So when I became a father, I had to play the role of a father very well. And if I did not play that role extremely well and remain focused on my career as a doctor, I would not be doing justice to the purpose of my life. <clears throat> so coming to the conclusion of what I'm trying to say, one day, it, through deep questioning and through deep uh, uh, answering in my meditations, I got a small poem which I would like to read to you, which helped me understand what I felt was the purpose of my life. And maybe it helps guide some of the youngsters who may be listening to this talk as to what their purpose in life is and what life is all about. This poem I call, A Promise I Bid Thee Give. In this cosmic circus on Earth's stage, O cosmic director, I play the role you bid. Villain or hero, maybe the clown, the actor is an actor still. A willing actor, an eager artist, I joyously play the role. 
in this circus of thy creation. To entertain the master, the subjects too, bid me and I shall play. A patient father, a loving mother, a dutiful child or a loyal brother, maybe a devoted spouse or a trusted friend, a kind employer or an earnest servant, bid me and I shall play. Or is it the flaming devil you want me become, the vicious Hitler, so good may unite? Or oh, the ten head Ravan of yore, ruled one day by anger, hate, lust, envy, pride, the other by ego, lies, deceit, and greed. And violence wild, so the noble Prince Rama, his victory may claim. Maybe the cruel Kamsa you want me to play, selfish to the poor, cruel to his kith and kin, for Krishna to crush the evil self. Or oh, the tempestuous soul one day, who in the desert you blinded, to awaken the divine St. Paul within. Bid me and I shall play the role you want of light and dark on thy cosmic screen. But a single promise I must exact, one only promise I bid thee give, and I shall play the role you bid. I bid thee ever stand by me, I bid thee in my thoughts be always present. I bid thee in silence sit in the heart of my hearts, so I hear thy silent whisper when darkness clouds my mind. Then for thee I play, the hero loved one day, and villain despised the other. A single promise I bid thee give, in my silent heart thou shalt always stay. This poem helped me understand that, and gave me the deep realization that this whole cosmos is the master's, creator's cosmic dream. We are but his thoughts projected on the screen to play the role of good and evil. What is then free will? What is the real purpose of life? How much free will and choices do we really have? Is it a narrow remit or a wide one? When we are directed to play the role of evil, can we then play that role of evil with his thought in our minds? Knowing we are playing a role or do we get so steeped in the role that we forget the director? So if you think about Ravan, Ravan was a villain, but he always had Lord the God in his mind because he knew he was playing a role. So even though he had Sita in his kingdom for so many years, he never touched her. He always threatened, but never touched her. So he knew that his role had to be played properly and well. But when you look at Kamsa, because we have now come into the descending age of Dwaparyu, his mind had changed. He started to become the real villain and move away from the role that God had given him. So uh, dear friends, what I would like to say that this whole universe is a master's cosmic game. The real purpose of at least my life is to try to play the, the game which he assigns to me or the role that he assigns to me very well. But if we keep his thought in our minds, then we will not be, we will no, not overstep our role and we will do what the role he has. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjeev Kanoria. Thank you for sharing the lovely poem. Um, and of course, this wonderful philosophy is, we can absolutely, we share an empathy with the philosophy that you have. Let's say this is so unique. It must be your, absolutely your own uh, device. Thank you once again.